All right. So uh, it's been quite some time since, uh, well, I guess it would have been Dave Meyer who uh, last spoke uh, about route views to, to Nanog. So we figured that uh, an update was in better. Uh, we figured that an update was in order. So um, here we go. Uh, give you an overview of, of the route views project, uh, its purpose, um, the status of things that we've added recently and that we're working on, and some of the issues uh, that have a, have come up and perhaps uh, solicit for some help from, uh, from the community. Uh, the slides are on our website here if anybody cares to follow along. I apologize because MGP cut off a few of the, uh, the bottom parts of the slides, but they're mostly readable. Um, so, RevView started um, around 1995, uh, started by Dave Meyer. Its original purpose was to uh, give operators an opportunity to see their routes uh, as seen by, say, UUNet, um, Genuity, or BBN at the time. Um, and so you can answer your own questions about uh, how the world saw your routes as opposed to having to call the knock of your provider or um, or your friend down the street or whatever. So you can you can do the debugging on your own without any help. Um, and many see uh, this is sort of redundant with the with the looking glasses that are well um, numerous at this point, I guess. But at the time, they did not exist. And we started off with uh, a view from that was provided by Randy Bush. Uh, well, first from from May West and uh, and then from May East and so on. And others started to contribute, which uh, well makes it a whole lot more usable if you can see your view from multiple different providers. Uh, today we have on the order of 70 peers on on our Cisco, which is, uh, which you can tell that too, it's route views, uh, route dash views dot route views dot org. Uh, and you can look at your routes or, or anybody else's. There are complete tables, um, again, from around 70 peers. And for those that are actually sending us multicast or MBGP routes, uh, they're available there as well. Um, so given all this data, uh, the uses of that expanded greatly uh, from just the operators community to uh, folks doing research, um, folks doing reports such as the CIDR report, and uh, later on to folks actually doing uh, research on the behavior of BGP and issues that need to be uh, corrected and how we might do so. Uh, things like uh, a lot of the projects that um, the CADA has produced, uh, Skidder is an example, actually uses uh, a good portion of the data from, uh, from route views. Um, and let me see, NLANR is another one. Uh, I actually don't recall what the NLANR stands for. Do you, by any chance? Thank you. Do you um, want to repeat it? Because I bet nobody heard it. Na national, again? National Library. National Laboratory for Advanced Network Research. Sounds good. So, all right. Applied. Applied research. All right. Good enough. Uh, so what we have is um, is the CLI access uh, again via Telnet uh, on the Cisco, and um, that's taking approximately 5,000 connections a day. It it does uh, vary in. Um, when there are significant events such as uh, the release of these worms that have occurred in the past couple of months, that jumps significantly. Uh, so obviously operators are making use of it as a debugging tool. Um, and since then, in order to make it more useful for the folks doing research, um, I think this began around 97 or so, and it was first the NLANR folks that started collecting it and um, and that is, and that data was also uh, at least transferred to the PCH, or transferred by the PCH folks to their own archive box. 
Um, but they were collecting just the show IP BGP output. <laughs> All right, I suppose I need to go a little bit faster here. Um, in addition to in, in addition to the Cisco and the show IP BG format, which everybody knows is is a, is a pain to uh, to do screen scraping. So they, we have uh, a Zebra collectors, and they dump this, the MRT binary files. Um, we collect ribs on a regular basis every two hours, and then updates uh, consistently. So as they occur, uh, the files are rotated on a 15-minute basis. Um, we also have a couple of other services, including a beacon, um, and all this does is advertise, wait an hour, and uh, withdraw the route, and then repeat that cycle, um, which the research folk are using to um, to uh, follow timing, for example, or how such events ripple through uh, through the internet. So, at a remote collection point, you might be able to. Uh, determine that, well, you know, it took 10 minutes, for example, as opposed to 30 seconds to actually uh, propagate that event. Um, we have a collection of uh, papers or a big bibliography uh, of things that have been based upon our data, uh, as well as some other things that uh, are past presentations about route views. And if you look at our website, uh, www.routeviews.org, uh, that's misspelled. Um, there's a list of the things that we have. As you can see here, we have a number of uh, route servers, um, all of which are accessible via Telnet, and uh, they currently consist of uh, three Zebra servers, uh, Juniper and a Cisco. Um, and let's see, a couple of mailing lists that are available for questions uh, and information about route views. And the new stuff, uh, we've placed a, a uh, route views collector at uh, the wide or NSP uh, exchange in, in Japan, and one that is on its way to PAX very shortly. Uh, these are hosted by KDDI and ISC, uh, to which we owe great thanks. Uh, so if anybody, this is my plug, if anybody would like to peer with us locally at PAX or at uh, at the wide exchange, uh, please please contact us. Um, the The main interest here is to eliminate um, uh, the multi-hop sessions that we have on the servers located at the University of Oregon. We also have uh, some DNS zones that convert um, ribs collected by uh, the route views uh, collector and present those as as two. Um, DNS zones that you can search um, and things that we're working on uh, is some data mining utilities um, ways to collect data out or to extract data out of what we have in a more timely fashion uh, and perhaps even automated um, let's see and this is an example of the AS path uh, or AS zones that we have uh, as you can see um, Dave wrote these for me. Uh, it returns a text record uh, for the reverse of, of a prefix. Uh, this happens to be the University of Oregon prefix 128.223/16, and it returns in the answer section here um, the the record, and it returns the AS, the origin AS, the prefix, and the length of that prefix. Uh, and there are similar. Uh, there is a similar zone AS path instead of ASN that returns the full AS path. Uh, so it would be whatever, 63582. Uh, uh, let's see. So issues that we've, uh, we've come up with or have been faced with are basically scalability issues with Zebra and questions about the, um, the effectiveness of the, uh, the timers that are used to timestamp records in the MRT files, this is the binary files. Um, and a number of people have also uh, come up with these same issues. Um, there are a couple of other projects doing the same thing or similar things. And some of these folks have actually made uh, progress already on correcting some of these problems. Um, let's see. And these are a few of the other projects that have been collecting uh, BGP routing data. 
uh, ripe bris, uh, which has been very effective and has uh, a very large um, accumulation of data, though I think uh, we probably have a, a, at least a, uh, a data set that is, goes back further, um, some thanks to, uh, to PCH who provided us with, with the older information. Um, let me see. And there are looking glasses uh, available, which everybody knows about. Um, I don't think I think that's it. Just about. Right. So I kind of skipped over that, but uh, is one of the things that uh, I think perhaps we missed uh, yesterday in the rancid discussion and. Uh, and also applies to, to route views is a lot of the folks in the community, some of you seated here, have, uh, have helped us greatly providing views, providing information about hardware, uh, and these sorts of things, and we owe you a thanks for that. So, thank you. Uh, any questions? Of course Dave's going to hassle me. That's good. Kathy said I had to. Um, <clears throat> I'm Dave Meyer. Um, Actually, the last slide there, what I was wanting to get um, some sense of the folks in this room about it, two things. One is that the data collection aspect of the route views project has become kind of much more important even for operational purposes because a lot, a lot of the operators are actually analyzing that data themselves now. So there's a research component to having that data around, but there's also an operational component, which is some, yet another thing I didn't expect to have happened. But um, my question really for the group, if people would like to comment on that, is whether or not it would be useful to try to do some kind of coordination effort over all these sources of data that are starting to be um, housed in various different places. Um, it seems to me that we could do a better job of not only collecting it um, for archival storage, because it, it seems to become, be, be becoming more um, valuable with age, at least some of it, depending on the events of the day. And then it's just becoming quite a bit of data. So um, if anybody has any thoughts about that one, um, please contact us. The other thing I wanted to ask folks is there are a lot of BGP listeners out there, but they're mostly based on either Cisco's or, or, or whatever, Juniper's or whatever they are. But the collection aspect of this really doesn't need that overhead or that heavy weight. And what we were thinking about doing is building sort of a standardized listener that output this data in a standardized format so we could compare it around. And that's another thing I'd like to get people to comment on if they have any thoughts about that. Thanks. Randy Bush, IJ. It's really nice to hear that something's getting better with age, Dave. Um, I use it both, both as a researcher and operationally. Um, I'm not really that interested in compatibility between the different ones. Um, we take the data, we process the data into our own formats. We archive it in our own formats. Um, we analyze it with our own tools, etc. But we may be more sophisticated, as, as researchers, as operators, you just go slurp the data and look at it however you want. Um, I'm, my concerns are far more with the accuracy of the data collection than the presentation. Um, and I'm specifically concerned with, I, I really don't like EGP multi-hop because that relies on the TCP stack of the collecting device and the delicacy of TCP connections over long distances. So you get reports like the notorious one, code read by supposed researchers, where 15% of the data that they demonstrated was actually useful, um, so on and so forth. So getting the collectors at the peering points, getting hard connections, getting uniform data, i.e. not customer routes from provider A, Peer routes from provider B and God knows what from provider C. Getting the data marked would be just wonderful. In other words, your peering connection with provider X, it would be really nice if it had a community telling you 
either they got this is their route, they got it from a peer, they got it from a customer, etc. It would be just delicious. Really would. So it's the accuracy and detail of the data, having formats phooey. We know how to program computers. Right. Well, let me say that uh, getting rid of the EBGP or the multi hop uh, sessions is one of the uh, the objectives of placing these machines at PAX and wide, for example. Uh, getting people to peer with us or even to change peerings once they're in place is, shall we say, more than difficult. Uh, a lot of people tend to be unresponsive uh, or... Give me a list of who to beat up here. <laughs> I'll, I'll send that to you in private, man. <laughs> um, but if people can, can help us uh, do these things, um, get peering, especially at these new sites, help us uh, with um, getting co-location at, uh, say, for us, for example, a site on uh, on the East Coast, one in Europe someplace, uh, links for example, this would help us along this road greatly uh, to get the data that, that folks like Randy actually need to do to do their research. And that includes, if they ask you for the information, please help them, it's in your best interest. Uh, okay, we're, we're running really late, so Woody and then we're gonna have to move on. I, um, well, obviously being proponent of all this since I do it. Um, I just encourage people to think about how necessary it is to have a third or fourth one of these at PAX and a third or fourth one of these at links as opposed to putting them into exchanges that aren't yet covered. Um, so I like get people to think about that when deploying these sorts of things rather than just saying, oh, where do I most want to have a box? Because it's the same place that everyone else most wants to have a box. It's not just that, though, but um, you might want to cover some of these smaller NAPs, but there are particular NAPs that are of uh, greater interest, shall we say, because of the people that are there. Right, but the thing is, those have already had two or three boxes doing exactly this for years at this point, right? So having a third or fourth one in the same location that now has to be supported by the exchange operator, has to you know get everybody peering with it all over again, isn't adding any value, whereas, like, Hong Kong, right? There isn't one in Hong Kong right now. There ha never has been. That needs to be covered, right? The uh, exchange operator is happy to have one, has space dedicated, waiting for somebody to deploy there. Nobody's had money to deploy there yet, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, I could probably name a dozen other reasonable sized ones that aren't covered. Um, uh, uh, what, Milan, right? None in Milan. Um, there are a lot I mean, of other big ones. That I'm sure there are other sure. possibilities. Uh, our budget seems to be actually a bit confined as well. So, um, well, we try to try to accommodate the the places that the research folk have actually asked us to um, to appear. So, being I guess our primary customers, we need to uh, we need to accommodate that first, I believe. But I understand. Yes. How, how is it that you feel that those are not already accommodated by the you know? The, the three or four boxes that are already doing exactly what you're doing at that location and have been for years. That, made, that's my question. They have okay. made that choice for okay, us you, by you asking got, us. You guys are going to have to take this offline because, you know, Dave's up next and he needs some time. Oh, just Hank have a quick comment while Dave's setting up? Yeah, I just hang out on RIPEN CC. Uh, the RIPEN CC, uh, you know, a response to Bill, uh, will install a route collector in Milan shortly. In fact, the machine is already there, so you just have to switch it on. Just, or you know, 